Let's go ahead and demonstrate how you can make a simple Linux system using buildroot. So buildroot is mostly used for embedded systems and it basically lets you interactively configure your Linux system and then build it. So you're gonna to wanna to start by going to the buildroot official website, which is buildroot.org and then click over here on download. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the link address, copy link. And over here on the left side, I have a fresh installation of Ubuntu. In my case, I'm using WSL, so I'm just gonna show you the Ubuntu version I'm using. As you can see, I'm running here Ubuntu 22. So let's just go ahead and wget the address we just copied. So I'm gonna run wget and paste the address. Okay, now you should have a new file in your directory, a tar gz of buildroot. So I'm just gonna extract this using tar xf, then pass in the file. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the gz file and just navigate to this directory. Now over here, you can take a quick look at the readme file, but basically it's really simple. You're just gonna run make menu config and then make. Before that, we're gonna install a couple of dependencies and before everything, we're just gonna run apt update. Now let's go ahead and install a couple of dependencies we need. I'm gonna list everything in the description. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, now that we have everything ready, I can go ahead and start the menu config. So I'm gonna run make and then menu config. And first thing I'm gonna do is change the target. So you can see it's currently set to I386. So I'm gonna press enter on this. And I'm gonna set instead of that, let's build this for example for x64. So I'm gonna just press space on this. And now you can see it changed to x64. Now I'm gonna use tab to exit. And next option I'm gonna go here is, I'm gonna go to the kernel. And I'm gonna press space here so it builds the kernel as well. And I'm gonna enter this option, the kernel configuration. And I'm gonna change this to use the architecture default configuration. Now I'm just gonna show you for a sec the system configuration. You can see that currently the init system is BusyBox, but you actually have a couple of options you can select here. I'm just gonna keep this as BusyBox to keep everything as simple as possible. And that's it for the basic configuration. So I'm just gonna press tab here to exit. And I'm gonna press enter here to save the new configuration. And from here on, I'm just gonna run make to start the build. Now, if you use WSL, you're probably gonna have this error. It's gonna say that your path contains spaces and it's gonna say this doesn't work, fix you path. Okay, so let's fix the path. So this is my path currently. And we have a couple of spaces here because we have all kinds of paths with program files, which has a space. So what I'm gonna do is just simplify this and I'm gonna set the path to be the beginning of this. So up until here. And now let's go ahead and run make again. And now it should work. Okay, looks like it finished building. So now we should have the files ready in the directory of output and then images. So I'm just gonna change directory. And if I'm just gonna ls this directory, we're gonna see here two files. BZ image is the built kernel and rootfs is the root file system that we're gonna use for our boot image. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, copy both of these files aside. So I'm gonna copy BZ image and rootfs. Let's copy them to our home directory for now. Now let's create here another directory. Let's call it distro, for example. And I'm gonna move both of these to this directory. Over here, I'm gonna start by extracting the tar archive, the rootfs. So I'm gonna use tar xf. And now I can delete this file. And now your directory should look something like this. Now, the next thing we wanna do is create a boot image that will contain all of these files. So for this, I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna use the truncate command. Let's take a look at the man page of truncate for a sec. Basically, we pass in a size and we pass in the file that we wanna create and it's gonna create a file with the desired size. So I'm gonna use this to create the boot image. Truncate minus S and let's make this, for example, 100 megabytes. And let's call it boot.img. Also, I'm gonna make a directory. I'm gonna use this directory to mount this image onto. 
Let's call this, for example, mounted. And afterwards, I'm going to use the make fs command, and I'm going to run this on boot image. And this will make a basic ext file system on this image. So now this image is ready with a file system. And I'm going to install another tool that I'm going to use, which is called ext linux. And this will help me install the ext bootloader. This is a very minimalist bootloader, which will help us boot up the kernel. My mistake, it's without a dash, so ext linux. Afterwards, let's check out the man page of ext linux for a sec. This is pretty simple. We're just going to run it with minus minus install and then the directory you want to install the bootloader on. So beforehand, I'm going to mount the boot image onto my directory. So I'm going to use the mount command for this. Make sure to run this with sudo. First of all, what I want to mount is the boot image and the directory, I just call it mounted. Now, if I ls mounted, we can see we don't have any files here yet. So I'm going to start by installing the bootloader. So I'm going to run ext linux minus minus install and then mounted. Make sure to run this with sudo so it'll work. Now finally, let's go ahead and copy all the distro files to my mounted directory. So I'm gonna run sudo cp distro star and I'm gonna run this recursively and copy everything to mounted. Now if I ls mounted, it should look something like this. And we're finished making the root file system so I'm just gonna go ahead and unmount this. sudo u mount and then mounted. And now the boot image is ready. So now we're ready to run this with QEMU. So I'm going to copy this to my working directory. And now I'm going to move to my second tab here and I'm going to run QEMU system x86 64. And I'm going to pass one parameter, which is going to be HDA. So I'm going to specify here that I want to connect a hard disk to QEMU and the hard disk will contain my boot image. This is basically equivalent to booting a computer with this image on the disk. Now I'll just press enter. And we can see here that syslinux has started. We have the message and it's asking us, what do we want to boot? I haven't put a configuration file, but it is possible to configure syslinux. So it does this automatically. But basically I'm gonna pass in, first of all, bz image. Cause remember we have bz image in the root of our file system. And bz image is a kernel. Afterwards, I'm going to pass a parameter to the kernel, which says that our root is going to be in dev and then SDA. SDA is basically the first disk that the kernel recognizes, and this will be our boot disk in this case. And as you can see now, Linux is starting to boot up. And we get a welcome message. I'm just going to type in root. And we got a shell. Nice. So we can type in, for example, ls. We don't have any files here, so ls is empty. But if I run ls with slash, we get all the root files and directories. I can also go ahead and run vi, for example. So just type in vi. And I can start typing here something like hello world. And I can also go ahead and save this on disk. So let's call this, for example, hello.txt. And now let's go ahead and clear this with control L. And if I go ahead and type in vi hello.txt, you can see that it works nicely. And of course, you have all the regular commands that you would expect on a basic Linux system, like find, for example. I can just run find and then slash. And it's going to list all my files on my system. Subscribe for more programming videos, and thanks for watching.